The future of modern space exploration has begun. Set out into the far reaches of space on December 25, 2021, the James Webb Telescope reached its scheduled destination orbit less than a month later, recently providing us with the first stunning images of the cosmos. While Webb's first images sometimes gave us a glimpse into the remote depths of the universe, the $10 billion instrument also recently captured a planetary colossus that sits enthroned in our home system, mighty Jupiter. Although the gas giant's observational history dates back to ancient times, the largest member of our planetary system still hides many unsolved mysteries. In particular, the question of its interior, or more precisely, its presumed planetary core, regularly becomes the focus of scientific debate. Fortunately, Webb's Jupiter images allow us to look at the gas giant in an entirely new light and get a little closer to unlocking its mysteries. Interested in learning more about the groundbreaking discoveries and exciting spectacles in the universe on a regular basis? Then remember to subscribe to Simply Space and click on the bell to stay updated from now on by giving us a thumbs up you're motivating us and showing that we can keep you engaged with the content of our videos. The Gas Giant With an equatorial diameter of 89,000 miles, Mighty Jupiter advances to become the largest member of our local planetary system. In theory, our Earth finds place over 1,300 times in the enormous gas giant. Also regarding its mass, Jupiter easily outshines the other celestial bodies of the solar system. Its mass exceeds the total mass of all other planets by 2.5 times. In contrast to our terrestrial home, however, the Colossus named after the Roman chief god has no solid surface. In detail, the planet is composed almost exclusively of gases, with volatile compounds without phase transition, changing to a supercritical state with increasing depth. Deep inside Jupiter, however, experts suspect a solid core. Consisting of rock and ice, this planetary heart could exceed Earth's mass by a factor of 20. However, while these hidden regions have yet to be fathomed, the upper layers of the gas giant has already been analyzed in a revealing manner. As a result, we know that this outer region consists mainly of hydrogen and helium, complemented by small amounts of methane and ammonia. As you can easily see, Jupiter presents itself in different colors, which in turn are subdivided into individual orbits and cloud vortices. The lighter areas are called zones, while their darker counterparts are called belts. Experts suspect that the light color is due to the ammonia ice they contain. However, why the belts appear unevenly darker is not fully understood. What we do know, however, is that Jupiter is a planet of extremes. The gas giant is repeatedly the scene of gigantic storms, strong winds, and fascinating auroras. The new images of Jupiter that Webb recently took show the giant in a completely new light. While the images leave us in pure awe with their rich colors and detail, they are also of unparalleled value to experts. Colossus in a New Light However, the fact that the images leave even the renowned experts with jaws dropped is shown by the statement of Imke de Pater, the Dutch astronomer who works at the University of California was positively surprised with the remarkably good image quality. As a result, experts hope that Webb's Jupiter observations will help reveal the celestial body's inner secrets in the foreseeable future. Together with Thierry Fouché, a professor at the Paris Observatory, de Pater is leading the study of the gas giant. In detail, Webb not only captured the gigantic planet on image, but also caught its delicate rings, some vanishingly small moons and even background galaxies on camera. The breathtaking image result is due to Webb's complex near-infrared camera, the so-called NIRCAM. With its three special infrared filters, this imaging instrument can capture even the smallest details of the planetary giant. However, since infrared light is invisible to the human eye, the images were subsequently transferred to the visible spectrum. Basically, the longest wavelengths appear reddish, while the shortest appear bluish, 
Jupiter's auroras, which are clearly visible in the overall view of the celestial body, appear particularly amazing. While the formations extend far beyond the planet's north and south poles, we can even make out the reflected light from the lower clouds and upper haze belts. But these are by no means all the details that Webb made visible to us. The mysterious Great Red Spot, a massive storm system, is also perfectly visible in the corresponding images. Contrary to its official name, the oversized anticyclone appears strikingly white here. This is due to the fact that it reflects a lot of sunlight, just like many other structures on the image. This brightness also indicates a high altitude. The great red spot has very high located haze veils. The same is true for the area around the equator. Consequently, the numerous white spots and streaks are most likely very high cloud tops originating from condensed convective storms. In contrast, the dark bands north of the equator appear barely cloudy. Stunning Details In Webb's wide-angle view of Jupiter, its faint rings again greet us. While Saturn is still orbited by thousands of dense orbits, Jupiter's ring system presents itself significantly more sparse. This applies not only to the number of individual rings, but also to their composition. In detail, the rings of the gas giant consist of microscopically small dust grains, which are usually no larger than the particles of cigarette smoke. For a long time, the material origin of Jupiter's rings was an unsolved mystery. Since the Galileo mission, however, we know that the fine dust most likely originates from the planet's smaller companions. Accordingly, Jupiter's moons face an incessant meteorite bombardment. As a result of the satellite's low gravity, the material thrown up in the impacts enter Jupiter's orbit, where it regularly spikes its delicate ring orbits. How remarkable Webb's image of the rings is becomes all the more apparent when we consider the albedo of the orbits. For in fact, they reflect just 5% of the already faint sunlight. Webb should also capture the two moons, Adrastia and Almalthea, for us. As the second innermost known moon of Jupiter, Adrastia has an average diameter of just 10.2 miles. Against this background, Amalthea appears much larger with an extension of 155 by 91 by 80 miles. Even if the satellite always draws the short straw in comparison to most of the other moons in the solar system, you could say the wide-angle view of the Jupiter system became the victim of a galactic photobomb. This, of course, refers to the blurry spots at the bottom of the image, which are probably galaxies. Behind the Motif While the new images of the mighty gas giant leave us with open mouths, the real work of the scientists has just begun. From now on, it's up to the experts to analyze the data collected by Webb and derive new insights about the largest planet in the solar system. To the experts' chagrin, however, the corresponding data sets do not arrive neatly sorted at the terrestrial research stations. Instead, they contain information about the brightness on the detectors of the space telescope. These raw data are in turn transmitted to the Space Telescope Science Institute. Once there, the data is processed into calibrated files, which are then forwarded to the Mikulski Archive of Space Telescopes. The information provided to the scientists in this way is converted into images as the analysis proceeds. In addition to the official experts, many non-professional astronomers are also dipping into the public data archive. With success, Judy Schmidt from California who has long been active in the citizen science community, has processed this new view of Jupiter. Schmidt collaborated with Ricardo Hueso, who is employed at the Spanish University of the Basque Country, to take the images in which we can also see tiny moons. Although the Californian has been combing through the astronomical datasets for 10 years and won third place in the Hubble's Hidden Treasures competition, processing the Jupiter data proved to be an extremely challenging endeavor. According to Schmidt, this was mainly due to the high rotational speed of the gas giant. Combining numerous images into a coherent overall picture is all the more challenging if the characteristic features of the subject were rotating at the time the picture was taken. Thus, 
in order to stack the individual images so that they make sense. Digital adjustments are essential. While the James Webb Telescope is expected to illuminate and decipher a wide variety of areas and constructs of the cosmos, in the foreseeable future, Schmidt is particularly looking forward to the detailed images of star-forming regions. A few weeks ago, Webb demonstrated how stunning the corresponding motifs can be in the form of the Carina Nebula. This breathtaking cradle of stars is located about 8,000 light-years from our terrestrial home with individual clouds of dust and gas piling up into spectacular, strangely familiar-looking formations. Although the Carina Nebula has also been viewed by the Hubble telescope, its technical limitations prevented Webb's predecessor from seeing through the bizarre swaths. Hubble's $10 billion successor, however, succeeded in this endeavor with flying colors, thanks to its remarkable performance. Webb gives us a direct view into the previously invisible areas where the actual birth of stars takes place. And now it's time for your opinion. What do you think about the fascinating Jupiter images recently taken by the James Webb Space Telescope? As always, drop us your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback on today's video in the comments below. Are you in the mood for more exciting contributions on the topic of space? Then take a look at the other videos on our channel, which you can access by clicking on one of the images in the credits. Thanks for your interest. Take care, and we'll see you next time.